The things in the world around us are either solids, liquids or gases. For example, we know that ice and a rock are solids, water and oil are liquids, and air is a gas. But what is it about a substance that makes it a solid, a liquid or a gas? We can tell solids, liquids and gases apart by looking at how their volume and their shape can vary. The volume of a thing measures how much space it takes up or how big it is. For example, although an elephant is heavier than a hot air balloon, the balloon is bigger, that is, it occupies a greater volume. This means that weight and volume are different measurements, and it's the volume that matters here. Shape can vary too. Here's a sphere, a cylinder, a cube, and an irregular shape of a rock. Their surfaces all have a different geometry relative to each other. For example, a sphere is a kind of three-dimensional circle, and the surfaces of a cube are all at right angles to each other. Let's look at how the volume and shape of different states of matter behave. Can we change the volume of a solid? Try squashing a rock. Not doable. They can't be squeezed into a smaller space. They're incompressible. Can we change its shape? Try bending a rock. Not doable either, because they're rigid. Solids have both a fixed volume and a fixed shape. Can we change the volume of a liquid? Here's a beaker with a volume of 200 millilitres in it. Does the volume become larger or smaller when we pour it into a flask? Trick question. It's still 200 millilitres, so its volume hasn't changed. How about its shape? In the flask, the water is the shape of a cone, same as the shape of the flask. When we pour the water back into the beaker, its shape becomes cylindrical, same as the beakers. The shape of a liquid changes to match the shape of the container it's in. This means that liquids have a fixed volume, but a changeable shape. Can we change the volume of a gas? You bet. Here's a syringe with 50 millilitres of air inside it and sealed at its tip so that it can't escape. When we push on the plunger, we can squeeze it into a smaller volume. When we pull the plunger, the volume expands. This means that a gas can both compress and expand to fill the entire container. Because they also have a changeable shape, they can flow and take the shape of the container they're in. Here, we're changing the shape of air inside a balloon. Easy. Gases have both a changeable volume and a changeable shape. We can usually change the state of a substance by heating it up or cooling it down. For example, cooling water to zero degrees Celsius will change it from a liquid into solid ice. Pretty cold. Freezing, in fact. Liquid water is between zero and 100 degrees Celsius so it's warmer than ice. Then, if we heat water to 100 degrees Celsius, it'll start to boil into gaseous steam, the hottest of the three states. The things in the world around us are either solids, liquids or gases. It's easy to tell the difference just by looking at them. Solids like ice have a fixed volume and shape, which means that they're rigid and can't be squeezed into a smaller space. They're incompressible. Liquids like water also have a fixed volume, so they're also incompressible. However, they have a changeable shape, so they can flow and take the shape of the container they're in. Gases have a changeable volume, which means that they can be compressed, and also a changeable shape, so they can expand to fill their entire container. 
The different states of a substance are usually at a different temperature. For example, ice melts into water at zero degrees Celsius, so our ice cube must be at zero or below. Pretty cold. If the liquid water comes from a tap, it's probably about 25 degrees Celsius, definitely warmer than ice. How hot is gaseous water? That's steam. Liquid water boils and turns into steam at 100 degrees Celsius. So it's the hottest of the three states.